Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera. Selamat siang kepada semua pelajar-pelajar uh, The Ford uh, Summer School on Manufacturing of Marine Algae Towards Society 5.0. First of all, I would like to uh, thanks uh, Dr. Kusti for uh, inviting me uh, to share with all of you on uh, algae based product in Malaysia and then I would like to also share with all of you I think my interest on functional food a bit about functional food and then uh, not uh, to forget I would like to thanks the Dean of the Faculty of Fishery and Marine Sciences IPB University Professor Dr. Feriden uh, Yulianda for, for you know give me this uh, opportunity yeah, again yeah, to share this one I think uh, I have been with uh, you know Dr. Kusti for quite some time uh, she's uh, very much working yeah, on um, algae work yeah, in Indonesia but uh, actually my I'm not I have a few uh, students working with this uh, project yeah, on the seaweed and then my, my interest more on the functional food, you know, health uh, promoting component from food. And then this why I think my interest more on the cocoa polyphenol, the health benefit of the cocoa, of the chocolate. Let me share the, the slide for this uh, presentation. All right, I'm from the Department of Nutrition at Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences, UPM, University of Putra, Malaysia, Sedang Selangor, very near to Kuala Lumpur International Airport, about uh, half an hour by train or by car, very close also to Putrajaya. I believe some of you uh, visited us for those who are planning to you know come to you know visit us please let me know yeah you can email me you can get my contact number from the Kusti. Uh, today I would like to share with all of you on functional food in Southeast Asia especially reference to algae based product in Malaysia. This is a presentation outline within uh, 40 to 45 minutes. I would like to share with all of you the important uh, topic related to this presentation. I would like to touch on functional food, but Maybe some of you are very familiar with the functional food. Maybe you can have this uh, a, a refresher or just uh, to remind you about the functional food. A characteristic of functional food yeah, in Southeast Asia region. And then we will uh, touch on very important, the regulatory and the health claim of functional food product and uh, we will last we will cover on development of a nutraceutical and functional food from algae in malaysia i think there are many things yeah, happen in uh, our country or your country as well about the algae yeah we are talking about the seaweed yeah, about the microalgae spirulina yeah, cholera i think a lot of things yeah, we are talking about this seaweed yeah, because uh, now i think become uh, demand yeah, and demand about this uh, kind of uh, resources 
Okay, this uh, uh, I believe yeah, this a common uh, uh, quote that you know yeah, everybody know about this quote. Yeah, let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. I think this a uh, uh, true enough yeah that you know we use yeah our food yeah to be uh, our medicine yeah because when you uh, back yeah uh, our grandfather grandmother yeah, they use uh, this kind of food yeah for the uh, as a medicine and then i believe yeah in indonesia yeah we have a mega diversity of bio resource, uh, resources yeah in our forest yeah or in our ocean we can use you know as a uh, food yeah or as a medicine Food and function. I think let me recap about the functions of food. Yeah, providing a nutrient. Yeah, macro and micronutrient. Yeah, the thing and the energy. Yeah, because from the macronutrient, because you know we need uh, the the macronutrient, protein, carbohydrate, you know lipids. Yeah, we need all the mineral, yeah, vitamins, yeah, and other component. Yeah. For the, you know, we need the calorie, we need the energy yeah, to sustain, you know, our growth and development, you know, our activities, you know, daily, and then the food also providing good sensory properties, yeah, because we need a, a good, you know, a taste, yeah, or flavor, or smell, yeah. otherwise, you know, we will reject, you know, this kind of food, yeah, because uh, not only the content yeah, or the nutritious about the food but also we have not yeah, to forget about the sensory attribute very important yeah, when we you know, sell any kind of food product you know, this one very important the sensory evaluation and then uh, the food also providing the health promoting role beyond the basic yeah, nutritional requirement because due to this the component the health component yeah, the health promoting component yeah, because we have many uh, antioxidant component also other physiological uh, properties yeah, of that particular component present in our food or added into the, the our food and yeah, that's why you know this food they have many function that I think we can, you know, based on the previous work, yeah, you can see uh, seen 2000, yeah, about this kind of the food that have uh, providing health promoting yeah, role yeah, beyond the, the basics uh, uh, nutritional requirement. Okay, now back to our uh, culture. Yeah, looking back to our traditional, yeah, our you know grandfather, grandmother, yeah, during our old, our you know old time, yeah, during our time, because our traditional food, yeah, because uh, you can see, yeah, our uh, traditional, yeah, our in our family, yeah, because you know based on our grandmother, grandfather, because our food, of course, yeah, nutritious. When you look at very low yeah, in uh, oil, yeah, fat, yeah, low in sugars, low in salt, yeah, because you know still the health, the healthy food, and then also in this kind of the our food, yeah, or our meal, our dishes, they have the health promoting uh, component, yeah, because we can they want I think the functional food, because that time we. Did not coin yeah, about the term of functional food. Actually, this functional food, yeah, the definition or this the, the the about the thing about the functional food has been you know happened you know very long long time ago because you realize that because nowadays yeah there are coin this the functional food actually happened you know already yeah during the, the old time during our grandfather grandmother. Okay, functional food uh, about the, the consensus yeah, about the functional food yeah, that has been published in the Journal of Nutrition. Uh, a food can be regarded as a functional yeah, if it is satisfactorily 
demonstrated to affect beneficially yeah, one or more target function in the body, in our body, yeah, beyond adequate nutritional effect, yeah, beyond our basic uh, requirement in a way which is relevant to either the state of well-being and health or the reduction yeah, of the risk of the disease meaning that not only you know to when we have this functional food not only to to, to provide us with the well-being you know we can when we have this one we will feel good yeah? not only that but also can reduce yeah, our the risk of the disease yeah which can reduce the uh, blood glucose yeah, blood cholesterol yeah? maybe we can have yeah certain effect yeah related to the the health yeah and will be there, there are uh, some of the uh, functional food uh, product yeah, example in uh, Malaysia market yeah, as well you know in our market as well there are many a uh, kind of um, food product yeah, you can consider as functional food because as we know functional food yeah, that are consumed yeah, as part of our normal uh, food pattern and that have beneficial effect on body function that go beyond yeah, adequate nutritional effect and they are relevant yeah, to and improve our state of health and well-being and again reduce yeah, the risk of disease that's why you can see the demand yeah, of the functional food now yeah, compared to the previous time, yeah, increasing. Yeah. And then uh, when we are talking about functional food, normally this nutraceutical, you know, we are not, you know, forget about the nutraceutical. Normally they are come, you know, hand in hand. Normally the nutraceutical, uh, natural bioactive compound yeah, in food or part of food that have health promoting or disease preventing or medicinal properties because nutraceutical will be uh, isolated from the food or part of food now yeah we are uh, talking about the uh, byproduct of the food processing and the peel skin yeah, seed yeah that's why most of the industry now they are uh, utilize all this kind of the resources yeah, to turn into the nutraceutical yeah, to get the uh, isolated component then that particular component they are uh, add to the the normal food yeah, because that's why they can claim that particular food functional food yeah ordinarily this kind of food there is uh, just uh, uh, ordinary food when they are added yeah this of uh, component yeah, isolated component having the uh, health promoting effect they can claim yeah this uh, kind of food product will be the functional food okay uh, what are properties yeah, of a functional food yeah, of course yeah, derived from a naturally occurring ingredient yeah but I think most of the the you know country most of the uh, regulatory most of the uh, policy maker they already agree that um, functional food yeah must be derived from a naturally occurring ingredient not from the the synthesized yeah chemically yeah and then you can consider you know it's a, a, a functional food consume yeah, as part of the normal diet yeah, because we can use you know this uh, uh, functional food yeah as our uh, normal diet and then have a uh, nutritional significance of course yeah because this one very important and then having the health claim yeah functional food you know you can have the health claim and then but you have to follow the uh, uh, the policy or the regulatory of that particular countries whether they allow you to have the health claim or not and then contain a nutraceutical what i'm said before the isolated yeah, active compound 
or component yeah, that promote or protect the health. Yeah, depend. Yeah, uh, not uh, this one according to your scientific work, according to your research. That particular component, yeah, maybe that particular concentration can give you know the certain benefit. And then also this kind of uh, component present in food, which yeah, which are otherwise yeah, not valuable. That's why you know before you are the food, you know the food product, and then you add this kind of isolated component, meaning that you know previously this particular food product uh, doesn't have this kind of food component. You add from another uh, source. And then maybe you add this kind of component will enhance the viability of the, the, the uh, mineral or any other antioxidant component. That's why also you can have this the properties of functional food. Consumer demand for the functional food, of course, their demand yeah, uh, they, uh, now increasing yeah, from year to year because why? You know our behavior, yeah, our uh, knowledge, yeah, and then our attitude, our practice, yeah, on this functional food. When you look at you know, as a consumer, yeah, as you know ourselves, yeah, because we have the health opportunity, because we would like to prevent yeah of the health condition. You know, maybe you know we 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 don't we want you know. If we have this kind of functional food, we want to feel, you know, we are in good, you know, uh, condition, you know, we are active, we have a good stamina, yeah? and then also we would like to control or manage uh, our health condition. Maybe with this uh, functional food, will boost, yeah, our, you know, our uh, activity, our, you know, our mood, you know, try to boost our mood. Maybe you know when when we have this functional food, we will you know get active. We have more energy. You know we are awake. You know all those kind. Also, sometimes our lifestyle, yeah, because our people nowadays yeah they are very uh, uh concerned about the lifestyle, about the environment. Yeah, because they want to maintain yeah their good health. And well being, yeah, they want to have a nutrition balance, their digestive maintenance, their con control of uh, excess, and then they want to enhance the mental and physical performance because, due to the, our economy, you know, most of the consumer, yeah, they have their you know, high income, they want to spend you know, on kind of this kind of food because they want to maintain their lifestyle, uh, their performance. And then also the general good health and well being. This uh, uh, the growing need yeah, for the high value uh, nutrition food product in Southeast Asia. When you look at uh, what a high uh, nutrition uh, food product, here you can see a very uh, quite famous will be the functional food, of course. And then also the nutraceutical. You can look at here the nutraceutical, and then the the food demand in Southeast Asia in our region, yeah, is predicted yeah to rise yeah by up to forty percent by twenty fifty. You can see how you know our uh, Southeast Asia yeah will be the, the 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 point yeah will be the target point yeah growing need. Yeah, for the high value nutrition food product because here you can see the changes yeah, in uh, now 2022 you can see you know what happened in 20 years uh, time you can see the changes yeah in our food expenditure yeah in southeast asia here there is a, a trend of functional food in uh, asian market you look at yeah from 2000 yeah you can see the increasing yeah will be going you know uh, always increase yeah now to 2022 yeah you can see how you know this uh, the, the the trend of this uh, uh, functional food yeah in uh, ASEAN market 
you can see the increasing yeah because due to the you know most of the people yeah the demand yeah of this uh, kind of uh, uh, food products in uh, 20, 2017 you can see uh, Australia trade yeah with uh, our ASEAN countries yeah grew by nine uh, percent eh, of uh, 2016 yeah to reach yeah 105 billion yeah US dollar which is a uh, uh, greater yeah bigger yeah than uh, Australia with Japan and United States you can see here the ASEAN yeah you can see what happened here yeah the important yeah will be the, the the thing yeah here will be the driver yeah the ASEAN food yeah for health driver will be the many thing yeah because when you look at here the chronic disease yeah and then with the modern yeah consumer yeah the, the you know with their the current yeah the situation and then with all the industry investment also the government policy and then others uh, factors as well and then uh, in Southeast Asia, in uh, ASEAN uh, uh, population, you can see here an increase in the calorie intake, yeah, because you know calorie intake, you know, very high, yeah, and then because we have like a borderless, yeah, for the kind of the food product, yeah, we are uh, not uh, limit, yeah, because now in our market, you compare ten five years or ten years, yeah, before, you can see in our market there are many a kind of uh, food products yeah because now you know most of our generation they have the hipster food they have the function the fusion food yeah you can see the fusion food yeah with all the high calorie uh, 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 food yeah with all the topping yeah with all the you know cheese yeah all the uh, sugary yeah you can see a lot of the uh, calorie intake yeah yeah you know happen you know in our in our population and then also changes to the composition yeah, of our diet yeah, that uh, are having a significant uh, impact on the health yeah, of our popula ASEAN population. That's why you can see here, yeah, about over the over 70 percent, yeah, more than 30 percent death in Southeast Asia uh, due to this non-communicable disease because you know by their expectation by 2020 that's why you know our uh, people yeah our consumer you know also us yeah we are looking you know for the good food yeah to consume because we want to also maintain you know our health well-being our health yeah because we don't want all those yeah happen you know by 2020 Okay, uh, functional food yeah, ingredient uh, market yeah, because that one you know, from the 2019-2029 uh, yeah, you look at here about the 7% yeah, CSG up and then you can look at here yeah, the blue, uh, the dark color here yeah, will be focusing yeah, uh, ASEAN yeah, Pacific will be the most oil yeah, of the uh, functional food yeah uh, 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 business yeah ingredient yeah will be a focus yeah on the asia pacific include the southeast asia you can see here what the ingredient yeah they are most yeah uh, uh, focus will be vitamin yeah vitamin here and then will be the uh, probiotic yeah of course the probiotic yeah because when we are talking about the probiotic we are talking about the prebiotic and will be the related a component will be dietary fiber and then here will be you know the key strategies yeah, of the functional food more on the gut health yeah now people are yeah, talking about the gut health and with the gut health they are talking about the prebiotic probiotic dietary fiber yeah because of course yeah as i think you know yeah uh, algae yeah very high in the dietary fiber yeah also yeah because also high in the nutrient yeah or vitamin yeah protein yeah and others component as well okay characteristic of a uh, functional food in southeast uh, asia region 
I would like to uh, share yeah, with all of you yeah, about the, a bit history about the functional food yeah, in uh, Southeast Asia when it started yeah, in Southeast Asia. And then back, uh, I think, to 27 years yeah, yeah, in ASEAN, yeah, because in 1995, I think you know ILSI, yeah, International Life Sciences Institute, the main uh, headquarters in Singapore, but they have also branch yeah, in uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and other countries as well. Yeah, because this one, they are they want based on the LC, yeah, Southeast Asia, their, their initiative, yeah, through several, yeah, uh, meeting, yeah, uh, workshop, yeah, in uh, addressing uh, functional food, yeah, in our region, because they are aim, yeah, to, to uh, promoting the understanding of functional food, yeah. And then uh, try to facilitate the harmonization in terms of understanding of functional food development, the uh, scientific uh, work, yeah, the health benefit yeah, of this functional food, about the health claim and the safety about the functional food, because this one very important yeah, when we are talking about uh, the good thing yeah, about the functional food, we uh, must uh, you know uh, don't forget yeah don't forget about the the safety about this kind of food and then uh, LC uh, has uh, organized yeah many series of meeting yeah uh, when you look at yeah since uh, 2003 2004 five and six yeah in order to uh, fulfill yeah the set objective on functional food uh, in uh, our ASEAN uh, uh, countries. Uh, outcome of this uh, mini, uh, several uh, meeting, yeah, series of meeting, I think they are functional food, yeah, they should yeah, conventionally uh, food form, yeah, must be uh, in food form, and process sensory characteristic it must be have a sensory characteristic then this uh, functional food contain uh, a nutrient and other substances or component yeah, that confer uh, a physiological effect and then uh, having functional benefit that uh, can be uh, evidently yeah, based on the scientific work and then process uh, functional uh, benefit that can be derived from consuming a normal amount. Yeah? Because I think that one, uh, the key word here, normal amount, as a regular diet. Yeah? Because we cannot uh, recommend yeah, have more yeah, as uh, what you know, we already you know, have you know, uh, uh, the recommended yeah, as a normal diet. And then contain uh, functional nutrient or other uh, substances or component that may be naturally present yeah, or you add yeah, uh, to the this kind of food. I think this one you can consider as a functional food. And then this uh, functional food yeah, have been uh, shown or proven yeah, to be safe yeah, over the long, uh, uh, long uh, consumption, yeah, long-term uses. Yeah for the intended uh, target population and then uh, but you have to uh, uh, know that uh, the functional food yeah, should uh, not claim to treat disease but you have to uh, really uh, know yeah, what is the do and the don't yeah, about this functional food this one based on the functional food monograph yeah, uh, published by LC in uh, 2017 because uh, this why I think you can go to the website yeah, if they have a, a update yeah, the update on this functional food. Normally, they are anything you know they have the update yeah, because they want as of uh, 2017. And then uh, when we are talking about functional food, 
you know, we will come also the talking about the nutraceutical. Nutraceutical uh, are a functional component yeah, or functional substances yeah, are extracted. Yeah, you extract, yeah, you extract using all the uh, water or any, you know, uh, something maybe the chemical, you know, that are not, you know, uh, have harmful. Yeah, but you have to follow the SOP. Yeah, when we dealing, yeah, with or the human, yeah, dealing with the food, you have to know the safety. Yeah, using all this chemical uh, uh, medium, yeah, for extracting. And then isolated, yeah. You want to isolate, yeah, the that particular compound, yeah, from the food at uh what percentage of the purity, whether you want to have ninety percent or seventy percent, yeah. And then fractionated when you want to fractionate only, yeah. You don't want to go in terms of the purity of this particular component from the food or part of the food. Yeah, now we are talking about the the peel, the skin, the seed, yeah, the food byproduct of the food processing. Yeah, sometimes we produce oil, yeah, from the kind of product, and then the defected, yeah, maybe the defected powder, the remaining, the leftover, yeah, of the uh, oil extraction. Normally, we can utilize for the functional component. And then must be presented in the pharmaceutical dosage form. You know, you have to really know or you have to do a R&D yeah, research yeah, and, and development. Yeah, so look at, at the safety aspect before you can, you know, go to the, uh, uh, the market. And then about the regulatory uh, status and health claim of functional food yeah, in Southeast Asia. As we know, uh, Codec Elementaris, I think uh, all of you know yeah, this Codec, yeah, I believe, uh, I believe yeah, all of you, yeah, the student yeah, here, you uh, have a, a basic, yeah. Uh, maybe your degree, maybe you are, uh, you know, attached yeah, with all the food, yeah, and nutrition department, yeah, related to the food, yeah, sometimes related to the food. And then uh, to protect, yeah, because this codec elementaries, yeah, because they are their main, yeah, uh, uh, function, yeah, to protect the health of consumer and to ensure fair practices yeah, in food trade yeah, because that one you know when we are talking about food trade yeah, from one country to another countries yeah because you can refer to the codec elementaries and then because these uh, uh codec elementaries yeah they are aim yeah, to achieve uh internal internet internet international yeah international harmonization yeah in food quality and safety requirement and then under these codex uh, elementaries, they have another uh, committees that uh, related to functional food. There are a codex on the food uh, labeling and another one, the nutrition and food for special dietary users. Yeah, this is why they are uh, you know, discussed yeah? and uh, talking yeah? or get a, a consensus on the food labeling because international harmonization yeah, in food quality and safety requirement very important yeah, before you trade yeah, or before you market your, your product from one country to another, yeah, from your own country to your neighboring countries. And then under the codex uh, guideline yeah, on health claim, this one very important, uh, very close yeah, or related to the functional food that has been uh, adopted in uh, 1997 and uh, I think the revised yeah, in 2004 because uh, there are three uh, types of claim. Yeah. One, a nutrient function claim and then uh, the second one, other function claim and then the third one, reduction of disease risk claim. Okay, nutrient function claim. Yeah, that one uh, under this uh, nutrient function claim, uh, describe 
physiological role of the nutrient in growth, development, and function of, of the body. Example, yeah, nutrient function claim, calcium aid in the development of strong bone and teeth. I think we know that calcium yeah, aid in the development of strong bone and teeth. That why example of the nutrient function claim. Okay, here this uh, table yeah, show status on use of nutrient function claim in Southeast Asia. When we uh, refer to uh, ASEAN countries, yeah, all ASEAN countries allow, yeah, they allow you to use yeah, the nutrient function claim except yeah, Brunei. Brunei not permitted yeah, to use this nutrient function claim. Again, yeah, because you have to, you know, when you want to uh, sell your product, yeah, your functional food product to Brunei, yeah, but you cannot make it such claim. Yeah, such this claim, you cannot put a nutrient function claim. When you want to sell your product yeah, to, to Malaysia, yeah, but you allow to do a nutrient function claim, but you have to refer to the positive list consists of 30 claim only. If your claim not you know, include, yeah, exclude this uh, 30 claim, you are not allowed to do so. Because if you, are, you want to make your claim, that include, yeah, or we include yeah, in this 30 claim, you are, you are allowed to do so. But you can sell your own product yeah, to Malaysia. That's why you have to refer to their country uh, uh, regulation, uh, regulation yeah, or the, you know, when you want to sell your product to Indonesia, you have to read, you know, or you have to understand, you know, what is the uh, regulation of the country. Okay, here, you can see here, Myanmar, Philippines, yeah, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam, they allow, yeah, for you to make uh, a claim. You can look at the Vietnam here, they are permitted for functional food. Yeah, they allow for functional food, no positive list yeah, available. They are allow you to do so. And then also uh, in Thailand, yeah, their positive list consists yeah, of 28 nutrients and 47 claim. And then this also the claim Singapore, yeah, 125 claim. And you can see here yeah, in uh, Philippines, they allow you to make such claim. But they adopt to the codex yeah, elementaries, but no positive list available. Other the second one, other function claim. What 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 is uh, other function claim? Yeah, that describe yeah specific yeah uh, beneficial effect of the consumption yeah of the food constituent in improving, modifying, or presenting a physiological role or health. This will be the other function claim example yeah, that you know you can make this a uh, claim plant sterol help in lowering blood cholesterol yeah this the other function claim here when we refer to this uh, 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 table yeah, you can see all the countries yeah, allow you to make this such of claim except Brunei, they are not allow you to have this uh, other function claim, and Laos, yeah? Laos also not allow you to do so. But other countries uh, allow you to make uh, others, yeah, others uh, function health claim, yeah, others uh, health claim. You can make yeah other health claim, yeah. But but for these two, Brunei and Laos, they are not allow you to do a other function claim. Now, the third claim yeah, that related to the functional food will be the reduction of disease yeah, risk claim related yeah, to the consumption yeah, of a food. Yeah. Food will be the functional food or the food constituent will be the nutraceutical to the reduce risk 
of the developing yeah, a disease or the health related condition. These are example, yeah, two example here, soya protein reduce risk to heart disease and iron can help reduce the risk of anemia. One will be more on the disease, yeah, more on the disease, yeah, heart disease. Another one more on the health condition, yeah, more on the anemia. This will be the under the reduction of the disease uh, risk claim. And then we, when we can look at here, they want also uh, the the number yeah the small the the number very small yeah for the country allow you to make this uh, a reduction of the disease uh, risk claim. You can see here only Cambodia yeah allow Indonesia yeah Indonesia allow you to do so, and then the. Uh, Thailand also, Singapore, Philippines, yeah, Myanmar, and Vietnam. But you again, you have to refer to their uh, clause yeah, in their uh, regulation. For, for, for example, Singapore, only five nutrients they allow you to make this uh, claim, yeah, a reduction claim. You can look at here, yeah, they allow you to reduction of disease risk claim. But again, yeah, what you know, I have been mentioned before, you have to based on the scientific study based on the not only one there are many you know normally there is a committee at the uh, national level yeah we are vetting you know through your claim before they allow you to to make this such claim that's why it's not very uh, not easy yeah to make this kind of claim but you have to provide the evidence yeah to the uh, countries yeah uh, the committee before they allow you to make such of such claim. Now we come to the the last part yeah, of this uh, presentation. Yeah, the one I think uh, all all of you waiting yeah for uh, to listen this the development of nutraceutical and functional food from algae yeah, in Malaysia because uh, we are talking you know i think uh, this kind of uh, uh, research or commercialization or innovation yeah with the seaweed yeah i think um, macro algae micro algae yeah marine yeah? marine algae i think uh, like you know worldwide yeah i think everybody you know have a project on that i think most of the country you know they are uh, focusing yeah to uh, utilize, yeah, to exploit, you know, the the uh, the algae, you know, for the benefit, you know, to the society, yeah, to because they want to push, you know, this uh, industry. Okay, uh, a bit, yeah, about algae utilization, uh, global eh, production and utilization of algae is a multi-million dollar industry. I think uh, everyone yeah, agree yeah. this is uh, a good yeah, uh, uh, a source, yeah. good uh, industry yeah, in, in the future. And then more than 99% uh, of uh, commercial yeah, algae yeah, produced yeah, worldwide uh, are seaweed yeah, because I think uh, very uh, famous about the seaweed. Yeah. I think every day, everywhere yeah, when we are talking yeah, with all the consumer or the our population, I think they know yeah, about seaweed. Yeah, but when you are talking about algae, maybe they don't know what what algae. But when you go oh, seaweed, okay, they know. Yeah, actually, I think only the term. Yeah, but I think most of our layman yeah, uh, know about the seaweed. Yeah, and then uh, about ten thousand ton yeah, per year. Yeah, because it be only you know the micro algae. Only few yeah micro algae yeah because quite famous like a uh, uh, chlorella yeah chlorella spirulina yeah and others also are uh, commercially yeah they are produced yeah for men for the uh, nutraceutical yeah and functional food yeah, because uh, for the industry yeah or for the products yeah or for the application yeah for the nutraceutical and functional food. Okay, a bit yeah about the global yeah algae uh, product market yeah the in this uh, industry yeah has uh, an annual yeah, global value of uh, US dollar five point five to six billion yeah but uh, 
you know, it is a use yeah, because this uh, algae yeah, mainly yeah, for the mainly for the food use yeah, because I think most of you yeah, know algae not only used for the food product but also for the other uh, application yeah, but like for the uh, cosmetic yeah, but for the biodiesel and uh, for the animal feed yeah, but for the food based product yeah many for about 5 billion yeah for the focus yeah, they are utilized for that yeah for food product and then 94 percent of the seaweed produced are utilized for food yeah and then about 1 million ton yeah, are used yeah, per year for the production of polysaccharide yeah i think we know about the polysaccharide uh pack Picocolloid, yeah, because uh, agar, yeah, alginate, yeah, carrageenan, yeah, for the thickening, yeah, for the food additive, yeah, for the food additive, and then fucoidan, yeah, I think this one will be more on the oligo oligosaccharide, okay, and then also utilized for the carotenoid, yeah, production, astaxanthin, yeah, and other carotenoids, uh, uh, type, and then also to utilize, yeah, to Pufa yeah, will be the uh, polyunsaturated fatty acid yeah, because now more on the nutraceutical. This is a nutraceutical yeah, because they use yeah, to, to add yeah, to the food. And then some they uh, you know, make it you know, like, uh, in the form of the food, like a seaweed, yeah, maybe it's in the dried form yeah, or in the different form. Seaweed industry in Malaysia, I think we, I think there are many yeah, project yeah, uh, that has been uh, completed or already a transfer yeah, into the commercialization yeah, uh, uh, aspect yeah, because most of the country they are started yeah, with uh, R and D, yeah, research and development yeah, after they are you know already like uh, upskill yeah. Yeah, and then they go to the industry and then some of the uh, uh, project you know have been around yeah, in university in the research institute i think the our government yeah, uh, give uh, money yeah, for this kind of project yeah, to boost the, the industry and then in uh, 2018 yeah uh, initial is the seven yeah, the largest uh, the aquatic yeah, plant producer yeah, worldwide with the production of 174 ton yeah worth about us yeah dollar 12.9 yeah million yeah it is uh, still yeah uh, uh, relatively low yeah as compared to other major producer like uh, japan uh, uh, korea yeah china yeah, and others yeah uh, countries and then it is still yeah we still underutilized yeah, because our uh, industry is still underutilized and we need more yeah, research, yeah, innovation and uh, commercialization activities yeah, to boost this uh, the industry, yeah, the seaweed industry yeah, in Malaysia. I think we have a very good uh, in terms of the cultivation, yeah, in terms of the uh, cultivation of identification yeah, of the species. Yeah, because uh, not only UPM, yeah, my university also, I think in the University of Malaya, I think they are, you know, started, you know, quite, uh, quite early, yeah, with all this identification, yeah, and uh, production, yeah, uh, cultivation, yeah, of this kind of the seaweed, yeah, but I think uh, recently, you know, we want to have like uh, our initial yeah, would like to set up as a, a biotech yeah, a, a company yeah, because they want to focus on this, this seaweed. Uh, these are uh, some of the example of the uh, food product yeah, or the dishes yeah, uh, based on the uh, alga, algae base. Yeah based product because uh, available in our uh, mission market and then uh, some of the product also locally produced yeah, in uh, our local manufacturer but there are some uh, yeah, imported yeah, from uh, other countries uh, like Korea, yeah, uh, Japan, yeah, China 
and uh, other um, ASEAN countries. Yeah. And then uh, this uh, kind of food product very famous yeah, in Malaysia. When you look at here, seaweed tofu, yeah, that one uh, locally produced. Yeah. They want this uh, company very near to my uh, my house. Yeah, just about five minutes from my house. Okay, and then this one I think a very uh, nutritious. Yeah, very healthy, uh, uh, healthy food. Yeah, nutritious uh, uh, meal. Yeah, prepare yeah, from the seaweed. I think this a kind you know of you know soup. You know, so the drink. Yeah, with all the uh, uh, micro algae. I think that one also very famous. I think that one the seaweed, yeah, normally uh, will be like you know you can eat you know just uh, like a jam, yeah, because uh, something you know very famous, yeah, in uh, in in our population. Uh, this also very quite famous also. I think the Big Bang, yeah, the Big Bang also very famous, yeah, in Malaysia. And then that one uh, show show you me yeah show you me also very famous yeah we have we have a seaweed yeah that's why you know what uh, I mentioned before yeah in our uh, our people yeah our population they are very familiar when we talking about seaweed most of the people know oh this seaweed but when we asking about the algae but most of the people they just you know bling bling you know their eye oh what what's algae actually you know i think the coin you know i think the word yeah seaweed you know because very famous yeah here they want like uh, uh, uh something uh junk food yeah i think junk food they like you know most of our children yeah like very uh, very much yeah about this one i think the taste very like i i i also try you know before i think i like also the taste yeah because the seaweed taste umami taste yeah that's why they like also the one you know with all the cheap yeah i think we can uh there are not yeah limit you know this kind of food product there are many yeah in the different form yeah of the normally they are utilized the the seaweed yeah because you can see like uh, uh, a lot of thing yeah because uh, many thing yeah because uh, currently yeah seaweed yeah when you look at here yeah it's used yeah as a food ingredient yeah in making ice cream also yeah ice cream yeah yogurt yeah and then pasta, cheese, yeah, bread, snake, yeah, frame factor, yeah, like all the sausage and yeah, beef patties, yeah, because they are uh, added, yeah, of this uh, uh, kind of algae, yeah, because I think in Malaysia also there are many uh, work, yeah, work, uh, working, yeah, or doing, you know, a lot of work on the algae from the uh, indigenous, yeah. Uh, algae yeah sometimes this algae they are uh, very unique yeah in, in in certain countries because in our east uh, Malaysia yeah we have uh, east Malaysia we have uh, Borneo yeah in Borneo Sabah yeah and Sarawak I think they have also their uh, island yeah this because in Sabah yeah I think they uh, have many uh, a variety yeah uh, of kind of the algae because they utilize yeah for different kind yeah of uh, this uh, algae yeah. and then back to uh, UPM yeah in my university yeah, I think we have uh, doing yeah, uh, quite uh, many yeah a project there are several project uh, completed yeah ongoing yeah, on this uh, focusing yeah, on this algae uh, uh, related uh, activities back in 2020 yeah because we have a uh, uh, collaborate yeah we have uh, agreement yeah we collaborated with the pnt yeah uh, the company yeah this is biotech company yeah they want to enhance the uh, efficacy yeah, of this uh, functional ingredient that to contribute toward the uh, society with the healthy aging because they're targeting more on the uh, potential antioxidant and nutritious functional ingredient from this kind of uh, microalgae because they have tetra SOD because uh, this uh, I think uh, has been signed yeah uh, the agreement yeah, in 2020 but uh, yet you know they are uh, see you know the, the result because from there I think this company I think they have a, a very good uh, facilities yeah 
and then uh, from there maybe we can see how you know they can uh, really uh, fully utilize this uh, uh, microalgae for the you know for the market and then uh, this uh, project uh, I think uh, already completed. Yeah, I think we we completed this year. Yeah, we started you know in two thousand sixteen. Yeah, that one will be Sakrat Cosmos project between the uh, Indonesian government. Yeah, because that one based from the group. Yeah, from UPM and others uh, university. Yeah, in within Indonesia, and then with the uh, a Japanese uh, university. Yeah, the counterpart. Because it will be the satellite project, I think they got I think a lot of uh, uh, money there, and then to work, you know, on on uh, their target, yeah, on on not to to innovate, yeah, to innovate in noble large scale cultivation of the high value microalgae, because I think uh, this uh, the inauguration, yeah, of the satellite cosmos demonstration site. Yeah, at UPM, because now will be the post yeah, project monitoring is progressing, because uh, we don't want you know they have only completed you know this kind of project because we would like to see the sustainability of this the work yeah how you know because we our university and other counterpart you know in Japan they also would like to see what happened after the you know the project being completed. And then we want to see, we don't want to just stop, you know, 2020, because we want to see what happened in 2023. What is the outcome you know, of this uh, project, the impact to the society? I think uh, that's all. Yeah, I think I also have a few uh, work yeah, on uh, algae, yeah? my PhD student, you know, from Institute for Medical Research, working on the, I think, new two, yeah, two uh, seaweed, yeah on uh, isolation of that particular uh, component from the seaweed I think and then I have another uh, student here yeah, working with another seaweed but uh, because I don't have um, you know the time you know I don't want to go more than one hour to share yeah, some of our work because mainly my work mainly on the uh, very basic, yeah, more on the biochemistry, yeah, chemistry of this kind of the food component. It's one my my field of uh, expertise. Yeah, I'm not you know focused on the commercialization, more on the basics uh, study applied you know work. On that. I think with that, I would like to thank you, yeah, all of you, yeah, for uh, your time, yeah. For your listening, yeah, my uh, presentation, yeah, my sharing on the functional food. That one I would like, you know, all of you understand about the functional food. And then a bit I touch on the uh, algae, uh, uh, you know, activities, yeah, happen around Malaysia and UPM. If you would like to ask any question, yeah, you can uh, get, you know, the, my contact number. Or email yeah, from Dr. Kusti, and then I'm very sorry I'm not you know able to have you you know live yeah on uh, you know today yeah because I have another commitment yeah outside the state, and then I wish yeah all of you the best of luck, and then uh, I have no idea whether you have also have uh, online yeah uh, a summer or you are face to face. If you are, you know, online, I, I pray yeah, all of you in the uh, safe, yeah, uh, uh, safe condition, I think, mean, uh, stay safe, yeah, have uh, enjoyable, uh, you know, uh, activity, and then make sure take care of yourself, yeah, also your family, your friends, yeah, and then thank you uh, for now, and then we will see you, you know, in the future. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye-bye. See you.